Um, well, what happened, what made me write this story is because this um, author named Sherry Winston from my book club from school wrote a book that was in one of our book club books. And she started giving us story ideas. And she like wanted us to write a story. And I was just writing ideas down. And then um, I thought of this. And it's not That's all. Aww. Now, how long was it from the time that you talked to her that you started writing this story? A couple of hours. <laughs> Right away. Okay. How long did it take you to write the story? Three days, maybe. Three days? Wow. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Three days. Okay. So read us your title first okay. and the author. The Race of a Lifetime by Cooper Ellis. And then The Race of a Lifetime, and then in parentheses it says Expect the Unexpected by Cooper Ellis, dedicated to the Milligan family and Anna. That's what he calls me in that. Written February 21st, 2013, in memory of Kristen Milligan for her 39 years of life. Inspired by author Sherry Winston. I'm going to start the story now. Zoom, Baxter Jones sprints down the Lakeland High School track. Oh, he says, I have to work on my running skills. The reason Baxter is practicing so hard is to prepare for a cancer awareness 5K run around Lake Hollingsworth that is going to take place in two weeks. Baxter can be a bit hard on himself, but his mom always tells him, son, you can't win them all, but I love your dedication. Suddenly, Miss Jenny, a friend of Baxter's, walks in and says, I see that you are getting some practice in for the race coming up in two weeks. Are you as excited as I, are you as excited as I am? Then Baxter replies, you bet, I'm in this for Miss Kristen and I am not letting her down. You know how hard it is for her and her family since she has cancer, Baxter continues. Miss Jenny responds, I love your heart and how you put all that you have into this race to honor Miss Kristen. Well, ring, ring. Sorry, Baxter, I need to take this call. Keep up the good work. <laughs> well... <laughs> Okay. Hello. Hello, Jenny. This is Kristen. I was wondering how it was going getting the flyers up for around town. It is going great. How are you feeling today? Miss Kiss Kristen replies, My family is still getting used to the fact that I have cancer, but I'm not feeling that bad. Good, responds Miss Kristen. Well, I don't want to take up all your time, but I... Just wanted to let you know that everything is going great. Talk to you soon. Bye. Baxter quickly approaches Miss Jenny and says, Oh no! Where there is trouble, there is Bobby Bones and he's coming down the street. He is the meanest kid in school and I don't even think he brushes his teeth. <laughs> Trust me from experience. Once he breathed in my face and it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jenny urges Baxter to get in the car quickly and they ride off the first Presbyterian church. When they get there, they see Mr. Kenny, who is busy signing papers at his desk. And Baxter, what's Mr. Kenny um, in this book? Pastor. I, he's, he's not my dad. He's the Either pastor of the church? Mm -hmm. No, not no, really. He's, he's like your friend and running, like partner. running partner. Ah, yeah. yeah. And who's Miss Jenny in this? His friend. She's my friend. Ah, okay. We're kind of his supporters. His right. She's like the race coordinator. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, got it. When they get there, they see Mr. Kinney, who is busy signing papers at his desk. Baxter says, Mr. Kinney, you are one busy man. I was planning to run with you tonight, but it looks like it, that will not work out, Mr. Kinney replies. Oh, sorry, Baxty. I got so caught up in my job that, I won't, that it won't work out tonight. That's all right, Baxter chimes in. The next day, Baxter's eating corn pops at his kitchen table when suddenly the Sunday newspaper arrives at the doorstep. Baxter runs, I'll get it. He thought it would not be that interesting at all until the, the front page catches his eye. It is an advertisement for the race. Mom, please come here quickly. I think this is something you need to see. His mom answers, Honey, what is it? I'm fixing my hair for church. 
Speaking of church, are you ready to go? Baxter responds. Yes, Mom. Are you oh, you already a re reminded me a thousand times. Will you come when you are finished, please? His mom replies, yes, I am almost finished. Did you brush your teeth? Yes, Mom. Are you just saying that to stall, to stall time? Baxter, don't you get sassy with me. <laughs> okay. But are you coming? At that moment, Baxter's mom comes in the room. Look at this. The race I am entering at the, is on the front page of the paper. Miss Jenny made the headlines. Oh, that is good. Now finish your corn pops and we need to get out of the house. I look retarded in that picture. No, you <laughs> And this is your mom in the story. Mm -hmm, that's but this their really their, their mom. mom. Okay, got it. <laughs> During church, the pastor is talking about God sightings that they had seen that week at school. At that moment, Baxter gazes over at, over at the stained glass window and he sees a dove. There it is. Oh, there it is. By the time he raises his hand, the pastor has already moved on to something else. But Baxter knows what God is trying to tell him something. Baxter says to himself, can't wait till until after church. Mr. Kenny finally isn't caught up in his work and he can run with me this afternoon. After church, Baxter is getting his running shoes on, and he and he is still thinking of what that dove meant. Did it mean God was calling him to be the messenger to tell people about how important this race this race is to support research for cancer for people like Miss Kristen? He thinks about it a long time, long and hard. He thinks about it long and hard, and decides that this is the reason God sent him the dove. He then realizes he is going to be late for his run if he doesn't hurry up, so he heads out the door. Sure enough, there's Mr. Kenny waiting to run with him. Baxter tells Mr. Kenny all about the dove and how it was sent by God for a reason. Mr. Kenny becomes very interested and decides he wants to help Baxter spread the word, spread the word about the work he is doing for the race. As they are running down Lake Hollingsworth, Bobby Bones and his crew are sitting on a nearby curb. Mr. Kenny keeps on talking, but Baxter becomes silent. Mr. Kenny does not what is going, know what is going on, but Baxter senses that Bobby Bones is up to no good. Bobby Bones shouts at Baxter, Is that as fast as you can run? Oh yeah, I forgot your wimpy legs can't go fast. Baxter is, ignores the humiliating comments and keeps on running. Once they turn the corner, Baxter explains everything to Mr. Kinney. The next time they run, they will pick a better location. The next day, Bax Baxter stops at Fitnich and they give him permission to put his flyer for the race at, in the store window. On that same day, he and Mr. Kinney speak to 100 students at his school about the race, and he mentions that if he will, they will bring a friend, they get a $2 discount of the registration fee. 82 of them signed up to run. A week later, Baxter adds up all his runs, and it is a total 15 miles. Not to mention Miss Kristen's mom, Miss Lynn, who he calls Nuna, is like a grandmother to Baxter. He spends weekends at her house and her parents are busy when his parents are busy. He even goes over on school days. She is like the syrup on pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a call comes in on Baxter's phone. The caller ID, ID says Nuna. He jumps on his bed and says to the phone, Let's get this beacon started. <laughs> Nuna says in a sad voice, Sorry, Baxter, this isn't a play day call. Miss Kristen is not feeling good. I thought you might want to know. Oh, no, says Baxter replies. Is there anything I can do? Nuna says, All you can do is pray, Baxter. I love you. Bye. Three days before the race, Baxter adds up all his miles again, and he has a total of 25 miles in the past two weeks getting ready for it. 
Bobby Bones comes up to him at school and says, Baxter, I will only run your stupid race if you let me challenge you to it. If I win, you have to wear... If I win, you have to wear a shirt, a skirt to school and put your hair in a ponytail. Baxter replies, but if I win, you have to wear a pink shirt to school saying I ran to support breast cancer research. That night, while he was in bed, Baxter thinks to himself, is Bobby Bones really going to beat me in this race? As he wakes up to a bright and sunny day, he checks off his calendar two more days until the race. This is it. On his way to school, he notices Bobby Bones is wearing a pink bracelet that says that has a cancer awareness symbol on it. Oh, you I have one right here? Yeah. Oh, oh you do! It says I wear pink because I have O5 Thurge and I am strong. Aww. Um, pink bracelet that has, that has the cancer awareness symbol on it. Baxter is excited to see that Bobby Bones actually has a little light inside of him. Baxter is studying at the end of the day for a social studies test and is looking in the dictionary for the word documentary and his eye fixes on the word dove. Below the word it says messenger of God. He knows that this is another God sighting like when he saw the dove in church. Baxter waits until dinner time at night to tell his mom what he saw in the dictionary. She says, that is good that you found that, but did you also study for your test? <laughs> yes, Mom, but my point here is that this goes along with what I saw in church on Sunday. You know the whole dove thing I told you about? Oh yeah, I remember that. God uses used a dove in the Bible to do something similar. Remember when Noah sent um, a d the dove out in Genesis 8 to see if the water was receded after the flood? Yes, that is why I'm comparing all of these. Isn't it cool? It sure is, Baxter. On, that, on the day before the race, Baxter is getting one more round of training in, and suddenly he sees Bobby Bones. Baxter freezes in his place as if he were a statue and thinks to himself, Oh no, I forgot to pick a new location to run in where there are no bullies. Baxter looks up and sees the white dove for the third time. For some strange reason, at that moment, Bobby Bones' hardcore dad calls him from the doorstep and says, Come in, it's dinner time. Baxter realizes this it that this was not a strange occurrence after all. It was a God sightings keeping Baxter safe from body bones. At that point, Baxter is free to keep running and his best PR personal record ever. That night, when he gets home, he thinks to himself, was Bobby Bones out there practicing for the race tomorrow? It is still, it is getting late, so he drips off, drifts off to sleep. The next morning, Baxter is Baxter's big day. He wakes up early, eats his granola bar and banana, since he needs a healthy breakfast for the race, and heads out the door with his mom. When he gets to the race, Miss Kristen and Miss Jenny are busy checking people in and giving out t-shirts and race numbers. He sprints over to Miss Kristen for two reasons. One, he needs to practice his running, and two, he really wants to see her and ask her how she's doing. Hi, Miss Kristen, says Baxter, trying not to act too awkward. I was going to bring you a granola bar, but I forgot. How is your family? Miss Kristen replies, my family is doing well and I'm not feeling that nauseous today. All of a sudden, Miss Jenny yells into the microphone, Racers! Racers! Come sign up if you haven't already. Remember, the race is for a good cause. Right away, Baxter realizes he better get his number and get to the start line. All the racers gather at the start line. Baxter feels like he is in an elevator with a hundred people. Somehow, he inches his way up so that he's the first person in the start run. Three, two, one, go! yells Miss Jenny. The racers take off for the run of their lives. Baxter is trying too hard to not get stampeded from all the people behind them. 
After he's gone about one-eighth of the race, he looks to his right and sees Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones does not look surprised. He just looks furious because he also made another bet with someone about someone beating him in the race, and he found out it was someone on the Lakeland school track team. <laughs> <laughs> Baxter does not want to get on his bad side, so but he starts to wonder if it is too late to take off his run to take off running down the yellow line. As he is running, he sees most of the 82 people from his school who signed up for the race. Everyone is yelling at him, Go, Baxter! As he, as he is about halfway through the race, he looks across and sees his dad who is watching him from the yacht club. He wonders what his dad is doing since he is supposed to have a special meet meeting this morning. As he passes, his dad goes, I wouldn't miss this race for anything, son. <laughs> Baxter is rounding the last corner of the race when he sees Bobby Bones not too far behind him. Just a little bit farther, Baxter thinks to himself. Before he knows it, he is ten feet from the finish line. But what he doesn't notice is Bobby Bones is caught up with him, and they are tied. Five feet from the finish line, Bobby Bones is ahead. Everything seems as if it is in slow motion. Right before Bobby Bones crosses the finish line, Baxter dives to catch up. Baxter cannot believe it that they have tied the race. One more surprise he does not expect is that Bobby Bones' dad has the pink shirt in his hand. After the race, Bobby Bones tells his dad that he doesn't need the shirt because he tied with Baxter, but his dad tells him, son, you are going to wear the shirt anyways. Remember what we talk, had talked about? It is always good to support something that benefits other people, even if you have to get out of your comfort zone. Bobby Bones replies to his dad, okay, okay, I'll wear the shirt, but only because it is going to help them find the, a cure for cancer. All the racers and their fans gathered after the race is finished, and Miss Kristen leans over to Baxter and whispers, Will you give a mini speech to the crowd? Baxter answers, I would be Baxter answers, I would be glad to. Baxter approaches the stage, looks in the crowd, and sees a five year old girl wearing with a jean jacket and a butt and the buttons are white doves. Baxter realizes that God has a plan for his speech. Baxter begins, think, begins, thank you all for coming. This has been an honor running here, and I just love how you guys came, and I did not hear one, one, anyone complaining. I would also like to thank Miss Jenny for coordinating the race, and Miss Kristen for her bravery and her smile. The money from this race will help detect all sorts of cancer, and one day we might have 25% less people with cancer. Thank you again for coming, and I can't wait to see you here again next year. As he leaves the stage, Baxter sees how much money they had made over the race. He know, he now knows this is the biggest accomplishment ever. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you now, I mean, you know that the testing of your faith produces Perseverance, James 1, 2 through 3. <laughs>